I just want to just highlight a few things. I, I'm worried, really, about how much sort of fuzzy thinking is going on in the world. Uh, you know, fuzzy thinking. People are just not thinking straight. And I, I try to think hard about what's, what was behind it. And I, I reflect on a time with my sister. My sister is younger than I. I'm four years older. So I'm like a whole school ahead of her, right? So I'm graduating high school, she's entering high school. I'm graduating college, she's entering college. And so one time I said, so Lynn, where do you want to go have lunch today? Because I had some cash and I, you know. And she said, well, what are my choices? And it was odd because I didn't realize until that moment that she was not yet capable of simply coming up with a fresh idea. Why? Because she'd spent her whole life taking multiple choice tests. So I ask a question, she wants choices in front of her to pick from. This would continue the whole life. And then I tested this with other people. People want choices. And I realized Maybe it's hard to just think originally and come up with a fresh thought that the person who's offering the question hadn't thought up yet. Because I think somehow in our society we're, we're hell-bent on the answer. The answer, the right answer. Because when it's the right answer, it's the right answer. And when it's the wrong answer, it's not the right answer. Consider this following example. Imagine you have a spelling bee. This is contrived, but it makes the point. There's a spelling bee, and you have to spell the word cat. Okay. So one student spells it C-A-T. Person got it right. The next person spells it K-A-T. That's wrong. You got that wrong. Okay. Third person spells it XQW. Do you realize that is marked equally as wrong with the KAT? <laughs> when you could argue that KAT is a better spelling for cat than CAT. Dictionaries know this because that's how they spell it phonetically. And so we've built a system for ourselves where there is an answer and everything else is not the answer, even when some answers are better than others. So our brains are absent the wiring capable of coming up with an original thought or thought not previously considered or thought between the ideas that are already laid on the table. What we're not valuing is knowledge as process rather than knowledge as an answer. In another example, a little contrived, but it, it brings the point home a little, even a little more strongly. If you're an employer and two candidates come up looking for a job, and this is, again, a contrived example, and, and you're interviewing the two candidates, and, and you say, oh, as for part of this interview, I just want to ask you, What's the height of the spire on this building that we're in? And the candidate says, oh, I was, I, I was, a, I was a, 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 an architect. I've majored in architecture for a while, and I memorized the heights of all the buildings on campus. I know. The height of that spire is 150 feet. In fact, 155 feet tall. Okay, turns out that's the right answer. That's the right answer. And the person came up with it in seconds. That person goes away. The next candidate walks in. Uh, do you know the height of the spire on this building? The candidate says, no, but I'll be right back. Person runs outside, measures the length of the shadow of that spire on the ground, measures the length of his or her own shadow, ratios the height to the shadows, comes up with a number. Runs back inside, it's about 150 feet. Who are you gonna hire? I'm hiring the person who figured it out, even though it took that person longer, 
even though the person's answer is not as precise. I'm hiring that person because that person knows how to use the mind in a way not previously engaged. You realize when you know how to think, it empowers you far beyond those who know only what to think.